Hi, I'm Joe Connolly with Neil A. Caruso with another successful growing small business. Actually, this is almost a medium-sized business now that we'll tell you about today. Sponsored by Dime Community Bank. They're good people to talk to about small business loans. Our guest is Joe Colangelo, who we knew when Joe was starting his own transportation company, of all things. And it has grown impressively. But first, Joe... Tell us the ingenious way that at least sounds simple that you started Boxcar Transit. So I grew up in Cranford, New Jersey. Thank you very much for having me on. And when I grew up, there was this long parking wait list for the train station. So it took years to get a parking permit to park near our little suburban train station if you were a New York commuter. Uh, at the same time, and then when I moved back years later, that same parking wait list still existed. And at the same time, there were all these empty parking spots right within walking distance of these train stations. Um, think churches, right? Churches, they really need their parking on Sundays, maybe Saturdays. But Monday through Friday, they have these empty parking lots for the most part. And so I reached out to them and I said, you know, what if I could fill your parking spots with paying customers? And, um, you know, we would take 25 percent and we would manage the technology, the customer service, the payments, all the marketing. And we would acquire these customers for you. And at the same time, you know, you would get 75% of the revenue and then commuters would get a reserved parking spot. And these municipalities would get more parking for their commuters without having to build any. So that's what I did. And, you know, church and driveway and funeral home, you know, adding these parking spots up and building the app, uh, we were able to provide, you know, over a thousand daily parkings before the, uh, you know, pandemic hit. And, and now that, that's on the glide slope. So it's a win. It's the ultimate win-win. Everybody's happy. The churches get a bunch of revenue. Uh, people get a reserved parking spot and Boxcar gets to live, thrive and grow. You saw an opportunity where others did not. And where are you now? I can't keep track even of all the announcements you've been making about growth, Joe. Well, thank you, Joe. Uh, so in 2018, we launched in 2017, we launched a somewhat premium commuter bus into and out of Manhattan. And you know, the thought behind that was, a lot of people are trying to pay uh, a great deal more money for a black car and fewer, a, a fewer, smaller number of people would like to upgrade their commute, but they don't know how. And so by running a premium bus, that's a little bit more than public transit, but a little bit less than driving. We're able to get some of these cars off the road and people onto a nice bus with Wi-Fi power outlets and a route that goes all the way through New York City. And so both of those business lines grew at a steady clip until the pandemic. And now the pandemic came along and it hit a lot of businesses pretty hard. I don't think anybody got hit harder than people who were in the commuting business. And so we saw our revenue go from, you know, about, we had, we were a modest business. We were doing, you know, 150,000 to $200,000 a month. And we had six employees. We were just breaking even and we went to zero. It fell a hundred percent. And so we took stock and we said, what do we have? We've got a service, uh, tech that connects buyers and sellers and they just don't want to buy parking and bus service. So we sold groceries, drive-in movies, Santa Claus appointments, mobile auto detailing. We did vaccine appointments. We used our tech in other ways to keep our business, uh, you know, moving to keep the, the box car motor on. Uh, and now on the other side of this, we see businesses gone back. It's bigger than ever. Uh, and we still have some of these other sidelines where we're partnering with great service providers who help our customers in all these other ways. Wow. You, you, you even, I think, uh, put installed swimming pools in backyards <laughs> <That's right. laughs> during COVID. That was just a, a, a total merchant, uh, you know, uh, flyer that I took where I said, I think there's going to be a bit, a lot of demand for swimming pools. So let me buy a bunch <laughs> of these backyard above ground swimming pools before they get scarce. And, you know, I'll buy them wholesale, get a good deal. And then, yeah, spent a week driving around to, and, and, you know, giving people above ground swimming pools. So where are they now? Did you give, are they, did you sell them to the renter at a low price? You're laughing. Where are they, all these pools? Yeah, we, we, we didn't want to take any swimming pools back. So that was a one-way transaction. Oh, uh, we, we didn't want any back. So that was a one-way sale. And, uh, you know, we just, we still, even last week, somebody was in summer and they said, you know, you saved summer for us back in 2020 because our pool closed. Uh, we had nothing to do. And, you know, I became a bus rider now on the other side of the pandemic because you sold me a swimming pool back in 2020. So 
uh, you know, these are small communities that we serve, these suburban towns. And uh, once you build a good reputation, it's very easy uh, you know, to leverage that in a lot of other ways. And that's our goal. Neil, yeah, you're truly a local business and, you know, you've really done well in working in the community and talking to people. So it's funny to see, you know, you pivot to all these things, but now you pivoted back to commuting. Uh, yep. You're back in the commuting business. I know commuting is back. I, I think the trends, you, you would be the expert on it, but I think some days are lighter than others. So what is commuting like for you today post pandemic? So before the pandemic, we had 50% of our uh, sales came from parking and 50% came from this, you know, elevated bus service, this uh, effortless commute. And we were really focused on growing the parking because parking, we don't have to outlay money. You know, when we partner with a bus provider to run a bus, we have to pay them whether there's one rider on the bus or 40 riders on that bus. And so we were really focused on growing parking and uh, that's completely on its head now. So Parking is still down in line with NJ Transit, Metro North, and LIRR. Parking is still down 30 to 40 percent. Um, but the bus, the bus is up uh, about 8x, about 700 percent from pre pandemic levels. Uh, and there's a couple things that explain that. People are much less likely to be taking public transit the days that they are going in. Um, we have seen our ridership go from about 20 percent female to about 55 percent female. And anecdotally, a lot of, uh, you know, talking to our customers, which we do all the time, a lot of them have said, listen, I had some bad experiences on the subway. I no longer feel safe on the subway. And, you know, your bus gets me all the way across town and all the way up Madison Ave right to my office's front door or within a block of it. And so, yes, it's a little bit more expensive, but, um, you know, I, I really, if it weren't for you, I would be driving in because I, I no longer feel comfortable on the subway. And so that's, that's an unfortunate uh, scenario in New York, and I hope it gets fixed immediately. But, um, you know, we're, we'd much rather people take a bus like ours than, uh, you know, drive all the way in and, and clog the roads further. Yeah. And, and you also have come up with so many ideas. We touched upon some of the crazy ones, but you also have had some really neat partnerships and acquisitions as of late. So tell us, yeah. how do you come up with these ideas to begin with? I mean, does it just hit you when you wake up in the morning? What, uh, what, are, what enters in your mind in, in coming up with, with these ideas and then obviously executing them? Yeah, if, if I went with the ideas that I woke up with in the morning, we, we would have probably probably failed in 2018. Um, <laughs> I've got a lot of ideas, Neil. Um, no, so it's, it's mostly talking to customers. Mm -hmm. I, I always come up with a lot of ideas. I put a lot of surveys together and I send them to customers and that weeds out a lot of the ones that don't work uh, or are not, not really great fits, but you know, when we get these customer feedback surveys, we will often, you know, we'll just leave a comment box at the end and people will tell us lots of information. They won't just answer the specific question we asked. They'll give us a lot of other information. If something's interesting there, um, I'll say, Hey, you know, would you mind, I'll, I'll give you a boxcar credit, but would you mind taking 15 minutes and we can get on a call and we can just talk through your experience and how you would see this working. And I know that you know is not very attractive to a lot of CEOs or a lot of executives or, or founders, but they, you know, in, in doing this, you not only discover really good ideas, but you discover these people who are you know, they get this buy-in and, and they become advocates for any new product line that you launch, and and those are you know worth more than you know, ten thousand dollars in marketing. If you have somebody on the ground who who understands where you're coming from, who who wants you as a business to succeed, and is telling all their friends about it and trying to make it work. Um, that's so, so it's really just talking to customers. That's our, that's our secret weapon. And I recommend everybody do it all the time. Did I understand you to say though, that you discovered a certain wording that generates more of a response? What, what, if so, what is that wording? Well, you know, we, we um, you know, we, we call our commute effortless and that's, that's what it is. And, and we can't say that it's luxury because other providers have very nice buses with Wi-Fi and power outlets and other providers have, uh, you know, nice drivers and professional chauffeurs like we have. And so what we what we aim for is an effortless commute so that you don't really have to think about it. We can't control traffic. We can get stuck in traffic occasionally. But the, the commuting when you leave your home, you know, maybe 30 miles outside of New York City, the time between there and the booking experience and, and the boarding and all of that and everything up until the moment that you arrive at your office or your final boxcar bus stop, that should be effortless. And so we cannot control the amount of time it takes. 
right now we're roughly on par uh, with public transit, a little bit faster than driving. But, you know, we can control the quality of that time when you are on the bus. And I think that's a big thing with people these days is that if you're sitting in a doctor's office uh, and you're waiting, it used to be, well, geez, you know, I guess I'll pick up a newspaper or a magazine that I don't really want to read. But now you've got your phone or your laptop. Like you have this device that gives you a high quality experience. So as long as we can keep you connected, keep you from getting bothered, no you know, harsh noises or, or sudden breakings, uh, effortless. That is, that is what Boxcar is selling is this effortless commute. Joe, how are you finding new riders? Well, we haven't changed a lot since the original days. We'll hand out flyers, do street fairs. We do, um, you know, sponsor little kids, softball and baseball teams. Uh, we generate uh, lead forms. This is something I'd recommend for small business owners out there. Um, you know, if you're, if you're just having trouble with the customers or something, you do a lead form ad campaign on Facebook and Facebook will help you set that up. And then you get, you know, say, hey, I'm, I'm going to give you a coupon code if you provide your email. When you provide your email, we'll email you that coupon code or we'll email you that discount. And then we really, you know, nurture these customers. So we'll we'll research. We'll say, OK, this person says that they work at J.P. Morgan. Where are the J.P. Morgan offices? OK, that's a 47th and Madison location. That's right near where our bus drops off. We drop off all the way at Madison Ave and they can get on our bus. So it whatever it costs us to get this person to try out the bus, we should do it. And that, you know, we can write them a, a handwritten letter. We can give them a hundred dollars in credit. Uh, but we just got to get them to try the product because if you believe in your product, that that should be the goal. So I got away from leads for a while because that's how we started. And then I said, well, we got the app so we can do app install campaigns, all this other tech forward stuff. But at the end of the day, coming back to square one and saying, we're going to talk to these customers and, and answer their questions and get them on the bus. I think that's the best thing any business can do. And you find Facebook is best for generating new leads, do you, Joe? For us, because we are we are leaving from a specific community. So uh, we can target just one zip code and we can fill that ad campaign with pictures from that zip code. And this makes people much more likely to participate, right? If, if we can pick, take a picture of our bus at the train station in Ridgewood, New Jersey. And so we create these very local campaigns. And so... Yes, if somebody runs, you know, an air conditioning service, like I recommend Facebook because Google is very good for search, um, but you can't like penetrate an area. You can't say I want a lot of content in this one zip code. And so if you're only targeting one or two zip codes, it's rather inexpensive uh, to use Facebook and Instagram. Joe, you're a hell of an entrepreneur. Someday you could oh, teach you. Uh, business uh, you. the way that you go about it. And I, I also recall that you're a former Navy officer. That's right. Yep. Wow. The, the Navy was, was great. Uh, always recommend it. It's the only advice that I really stand behind, which is, you know, do something that, that sucks right after you graduate from college. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Everything else seems easy in comparison. Wow. Thanks a lot. Uh, Joe Colangelo, Boxcar Transit. Uh, yeah, continued like success. And we'll check in with you next year to see how many more bus lines you've bought. <laughs> Thank you so much for the time. You're really the best and an absolute uh, treasure for, for all of New York uh, region. Thanks, Joe. Bye.